Okay, well here are my bikes. Someone had uh, sent me a comment on one of my YouTube videos asking about my bikes and what kind of bikes do I ride and what kind of setup do I have on my bikes. And I figured why not just put a little something together. It's probably not going to be very entertaining. But I figured I'd spend a few minutes and show you my bikes and tell you what I've done with them. Uh, the first bike here that's closest to the camera is my 350. This is a KTM 350 XC. It's a 2012 model. The bike that's right here is a KTM 250 XC 2013 model. Uh, both of these bikes have a uh, linkage rear suspension. Both of these bikes are actually not very heavily modified. Um, I'll start with the 350 and just tell you what I've got on it and what's been done to it. Uh, first of all, I guess the tires. Uh, the front tire on both bikes is a uh, Bridgestone M59. This is the stock tire that KTM put on bikes for a number of years. Um, I really like this tire. It has great traction here in the Carolinas. It seems to work good in the mud. It seems to work good in sand. It works good on the rocks. Just seems to work just about everywhere. Uh, gives a very good long lasting life. Um, it's just a great tire. I have been using these tires for the last couple years and have zero complaints. Um, the back tires on both bikes is the Dunlop 803 Trials tire. Um, I use these tires uh, because of it, again, just like the fronts, they last a real long time and they have uh, just incredible traction and just about every condition out there other than very muddy conditions if it's uh, been raining the day before a race and it's just going to be real sloppy uh, real slick um, I have started using a knobby which I have a spare wheel with a knobby tire mounted up for mud races or just races where I think the traction might be a little difficult. And this is the new Dunlop AT81. Um, out of all the knobbies I've used, I find this one to be about the best. It has really good traction. It lasts a real long time. And uh, quite honestly, it works a lot like a trials tire. It gives really good traction over rocks and roots. And I've been real impressed with this tire. Um, I may start using this more in lieu of a trials tire. Anyway, both of the front and rear tire on my bikes, uh, I use the uh, Bridgestone Ultra Heavy Duty Tubes. I also use Motion Pro rim locks, the nice big aluminum uh, rim locks that really grip the tire and keep the tire from sliding around. Uh, what else? Um, chain is a gold X-ring chain from Primary Drive. That's Rocky Mountain ATV's uh, house brand. I find that those chains will last at least a good 100 hours, if not more. Uh, very minimal stretching. You may have to make an adjustment on it two or three times over the life of a chain. Um, I use the TM Design Works uh, chain sliders, or excuse me, chain guide, because again, it's uh, they last a real long time. They're real solid. They don't bend. Uh, you don't have any problems out of those. Um, on my 350 here, I have a EE standard height, uh, standard foam seat. And uh, I like a seat that works great. I don't like the wrinkles. Um, I guess it's just uh, from the cover stretching from, from me being slid towards the back of the bike. Um, I don't like that aspect of it, but it is what it is, and it works. Uh, the bike has uh, an EE slave cylinder. 
I get a, a, a guard, I get rid of the plastic that's over all of this so that you don't get mud packed in there. Um, on both bikes I use the KTM plastic skid plate. It comes right off with one turn of this clip here in the front. Um, I like that obviously. It gives protection to the bottom of the engine and the frame and it's really easy to take off to clean the bike. My handlebars on both bikes have been cut down uh, the width from Bark Buster in to Bark Buster in is right at about 30 inches. It helps to get the bike in between the trees on a tight course. Um, hand guards on both bikes. Uh, Scott's steering stabilizer on both bikes. And I use the welded on posts. I don't uh, use the kind that clamp on here on the frame just because the weld on is really easy to, to weld on. You don't have to take anything apart to put it on your bike. And they don't bend or tweak or move. Once you put them on, they're there. I've had the other style that uh, you put on with taking the whole front end apart. You hit a tree real hard and it'll get cockeyed. And then, then your steering's all funky until you get a chance to work on it. Um, Grips, I just buy just whatever grips I, I feel like using at the time. These are Pro Taper uh, Rockstar grips. They're pretty soft and uh, they give good traction. I always used grip donuts, uh, help cut down on blisters and on your thumbs and whatnot. Both bikes, I have these SRT radiator guards. Uh, they replace the, the louvers that you would normally have and they protect the front of the radiators as long as well as the sides. They look good. Um, they work real well. Uh, they seem to not alter the cooling in any way. They, the radiators stay cool. And uh, I, don't, I notice I don't get as much mud and debris kicked up into my radiators as I do with the stock plastic uh, louvers and the uh, other style guards that are on the market. Uh, the suspension on my bikes, I use Full Travel Innovations uh, to do my suspension work. Um, to be totally honest with you, both of my bikes have stock valving. I have not changed the valving in them, although I would like to, and it is something that is on my to-do list. I'm just going right now with the stock valving. I just have FTI make sure my spring rates are correct and uh, change the fluids keep those up to spec about every 40 to 50 hours definitely want to do a fluid change and I also use the uh, SKS seals I believe they're called seems like ever since I switched to those I haven't had a leaking fork so I've been real happy with that um, on my 350 what else do I have different uh, you know I've got a recluse clutch in here this is the um, version 2.0. They've got a new 3.0 that's supposed to have a little better durability, last a little longer, but it really doesn't work any better. This is the 2.0 and uh, I've been pretty happy with it. I used a recluse in this bike just to help get rid of some of the engine braking. I'm not a real big fan of the engine braking of the four strokes and uh, this recluse definitely helps out with that and then of course with the way the power characteristics are in a four-stroke engine you don't really need to clutch it as much and using the auto clutch just seems to be a little bit of a small advantage so I use it on this bike I do have an electric fan on the radiator um, don't always need to run it but sometimes I'll just turn it on if I know it's going to be a tight race or if I'm on a trail ride with a lot of single track I'll run that to help cut down on uh, the heat in the engine um, I do have a aftermarket tip on my brake pedal just seems to be a little bit stronger than the stock one and I do have a guard over my rear rotor uh, I think that when you look at these guards and you see how scratched up they get and banged up, the, they obviously are helping out keeping your uh, 
brake rotor from getting damaged and luckily I've never had a warped or damaged rotor so I figure they must be doing something and uh, I've got a tugger strap on the bike just happened to the previous owner I bought the bike from put it on there and it's on there um, never had to actually use it otherwise this bike is stock I haven't got a lot of modifications done to it otherwise the engines all stock and the bike has close to a hundred hours on it now and engines running great never had a problem out of it um, I do have a aftermarket battery in that helps the engine to turn over a little faster makes it start a little quicker um, 250 still pretty dirty I raced it on Sunday two days ago and this is what she looks like after the race so it hasn't been cleaned or prepped uh, but again just like the 350 here it's all basically the same mods uh, it's got the Rocky Mountain ATVs primary drive gold X-ring chain. I'm also using the primary drive just the plain Jane steel sprockets, the cheapest ones they have. They seem to last just about forever. And uh, I usually buy the chain and sprockets as a combo. Have the E slave cylinder guard. Still running the stock uh, electric start system, and actually I use that almost exclusively on this bike. I've only kick-started it maybe twice since I've owned it. Uh, seems to get really good starts, and uh, if I don't get the whole shot, I'm at least right there in the mix at the start of a race. On this bike, I actually have, I don't even know what brand this is, Hammerhead maybe? Have an aftermarket shift lever. And a lot of people look at it and say that it looks bent, and it looks looks funny but it and it is bent but I actually like it that way it gives me a little bit more room uh, between my boot and the, the shift lever um, so I have no complaints with that uh, this bike I'm also running the SRT radiator guards just like on the 350 uh, same deal with the suspension it's FTI but it's still stock valving same handlebars, same Scott stabilizer setup, same tires. I have an FMF fatty exhaust pipe. Got a nice dent in it from my race on Sunday where I ran right into a tree. I'm actually still kind of limping around. I think I sprained my ankle, but uh, at any rate, um, both my bikes have hour meters on them just so I can keep track of oil changes and whatnot. This bike I have the FMF Power Core Silencer and I also have a Turbine Core which is a spark arrester. I'll switch it out to that for Enduros. And I do prefer this two stroke over the four stroke for the Enduros. Just a little lighter, a little easier to toss in and around the tight tight single track that these Enduros seem to have. Um, I also have an aftermarket uh, tip for my brake lever and a uh, aftermarket shark fin there for the rear rotor. Um, what else could I tell you about this bike? Uh, this one actually has about 130 or 140 hours on it. Let's see, 135.9 hours. Still runs like a champ. Motor on this one stock. You do see the recluse clutch cover, but it is a stock clutch inside. Um, I just have the cover on there. It gives a little more oil capacity. I think it may help the transmission and the clutch to run a little cooler. Probably totally unnecessary, but I had it, so I use it. Um, same cut down handlebars. I do have a Motion Pro throttle cable. Previous owner of this bike had put that on there and I was glad he did. The stock cable on these bikes comes a little bit on the short side and it's not too uncommon to see uh, the way the throttle cable is routed to have a, a bind in the cable and end up with a stuck throttle. So you have to either carefully reroute the, the throttle cable or get a longer cable like this to keep that from happening. 
Um, I run my levers low. I like to stand up on the pegs as much as I can. So I do like to have the levers mounted on a bit of a low angle. And uh, I guess that's about it. Which bike do I like better? I really don't have a favorite. They both work great. I can hop on either one of them and have fun and have a good race out of either bike. Um, for just trail riding and fooling around, maybe the 350 is a little better. You don't have to mix the gas. It's fuel injected. If you tip over, the bike doesn't leak fuel all over the place. Um, you definitely get a little more mileage out of a tank of fuel. Um, flip side with the 250 here is it's super light. Feels real nice and flickable. And I like that aspect of it. So that's about it. I don't know what else I could show you on these bikes. Suspension, like I say, is stock valving. Uh, and I actually have the clickers just about in the stock position. For the most part, I'm happy with it. I, uh, I'm sure a revalve would make me a little happier. But I just haven't done it yet. And uh, here's something else it. I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you my Volkswagen. Um, this is what I use to take, take my bike to the race. It's a 2013 Volkswagen Jetta. It's a turbo diesel. I've seen a few people riding around in these over the years and always thought, well, I'm sure they're getting good fuel economy. I wonder what it'd be like to have one. And I went off and got one. And I can tell you what, I think it's probably the smartest thing I ever did. I got a little hitch and put this trailer hitch on it. And uh, I tow my bikes to the race on a little trailer. I've got two trailers. One holds one bike, one holds two bikes. And um, it's a great little car. I average pulling just one bike, if it's just me by myself in the car, my one bike on a, the single trailer, my gear bag, my cooler, uh, you know, just all my stuff I'm going to bring with me to the race. Um, I average actually between 38 and 42 miles to the gallon. It's hard to beat that. If I have two bikes on a double trailer, usually means somebody's riding with me. So that's two people in a car, two gear bags, two coolers, two bikes, gas jugs, etc., etc. With all of that in there, I'm looking at more like 36 miles at a gallon on a low up to about 40 miles at a gallon for a high. Just a great little car. It's not only getting good gas mileage, but it's actually quite fun to drive. Has uh, heated seats. It's got a automatic dual clutch transmission, air conditioning, heat, all the good stuff. You know, it's nothing super fancy, but it gets the job done. It's got a huge trunk. You can put quite a bit of gear in the back. I've got a toolbox I keep back there just in case I need to work on the bikes or work on my trailer or whatever. But it's a really deep trunk. You easily put two people's worth of stuff in the back of here and a gas jug and so on and so forth and have room to spare. You can probably see here in the video I've got the Toyota Tundra which is also nice. I enjoy that truck. And my trailer, and you're probably thinking, well, why doesn't he just use that to take his bikes to the race? Well, how does 12 miles at a gallon suit you? It doesn't suit me too well. Um, I use it mainly for work. I don't rarely ever pull my bike around with a truck. But I love my little VW. And I'm going to go up here and show you my trailers. Okay, well, these are the trailers I use to tow the bikes. This first trailer here, I bought it used. Don't know who makes it, but it's four foot wide and eight feet long. And it's just uh, built like a little utility trailer. It has two metal rails on it. 
I filled in the gaps between the rails with some some wooden planks just to give me something to stand on and give me something to sit on. I put a little box on the front of it so that I can put my dirty gear or wet boots or whatever in there keep them from getting the car dirty. But uh, use this trailer when I'm hauling two bikes. Then I've got this trailer here that I use when I'm hauling just one bike by itself. This trailer is actually made out of aluminum and it's a jet ski trailer. A Triton aluminum jet ski trailer. Bought it used for I don't know maybe 200 bucks and took the all the stuff off of it that would be for hauling a jet ski or a small boat and I put a metal rail down the center. I added some wooden planks again that you can stand on or sit down on. Put some eye rings for the tie down straps to connect to and then one other little thing I did was I took the axle off of the trailer and I flipped it from the bottom of the leaf springs to the top of the leaf springs. That lowered the trailer by a couple inches. It just gets the bike a little bit lower to the ground, makes it easier to load without a ramp and cuts down on the air hitting the bike I think. But this trailer here is super light and you don't even hardly feel it behind the car when you're going down the highway. But this is the, these are my trailers. And between these trailers and that little Volkswagen, I can get down the road to these races and I just save so much money on fuel that it about pays for my entry fee to the races I attend. Anyway, that's that. Thanks for watching my video.